How's everybody doing today? Good morning, or almost afternoon, right? Um, all these empty chairs here, they must be at brunch or something, you know. They're wasting their money away, spending it on mimosas. You're here building a plan, right, to get into a home, okay? Uh, so, so for starters, um, my name is Justin Glass. I'm a loan officer at First Home Mortgage. Um, we are a local lender, so we'll get a few of the shameless plugs and stuff out of the way first before we get anything, right? Um, let me, let me expand this for a second here so we can get the full view. There we go. All right, perfect. Um, so I grew up in the area here, uh, in Southern Maryland. I'm not gonna go over all these facts if you can read them and see them, but uh, I currently live in Silver Spring, just a few minutes down the road here. Um, I was previously in restaurants before for 10 years. Uh, so. A lot of customer experience, a lot of different people uh, learned a ton doing that for sure. Um, and it's translated nicely for me into the mortgage side, okay? Um, went to Catholic University, I played slow pitch softball, um, and I golf a lot, you know. Nothing, nothing fun or sexy. And that translates nicely into, um, into what we're talking about now with mortgages, right? So when you look at the full scope of the, the process, right, and, and getting into a home. Obviously, so I was talking about all the things involved on the real estate side, and then there's, um, we'll get into a second about, um, there's the title angle, and then there's the lender, right? So I always refer to ourselves as, as the non-sexy part of this, right? Because we're talking about money, and it's not, <laughs> not never, never super fun to deal with, right? Um, so before I jump into that, um, on the slides, just a little bit about first home mortgage. So we are the largest purchase lender in the state of Maryland. Um, I'll kind of just bullet the facts here, uh, Maryland Mortgage Program, which he's gonna speak to. Uh, we're the biggest lender in Maryland for that. DC Open Doors, if you're looking in DC as well. Um, we've been around for a long time, we're, we're, we're local. Um, and I think that's the first point that I kinda wanna bring up. Um, whenever you're going to get into this process and meet with a realtor, um, one of the first things I think they'll tell you is uh, to talk to a local lender, okay? Um, you all, I'm sure, watch TV, everybody's seen ads for Rocket Mortgage and all these online lenders, right? Um, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna speak too badly on them. Um, they obviously have some advantages. Uh, they try to make things you know, as seamless and easy as possible. Um, the advantages that you get with somebody local, though, is we're here, we're in the community, we're trying to, to, to build you up and ourselves up, right? Our, our best referral sources are gonna be people like you, right, who we work with. Um, and you know, we're here with you helping build that community, right? Um, so I'm gonna start before we get into the pre-qualification here and ask a question. How many of you have thought about doing this before, purchasing a home before today? Probably a lot of time, right? <laughs> um, it's, uh, and, and I guess the question is, you know, what held you back, right? Um, the biggest answer that I've come across in my career, right? The hesitancy is, you know, Fear, right? I don't know a lot about it. Where do I start? It's a ton of money. Like, how does this all work? It seems daunting, right? Um, and I think <laughs> I'm a straightforward person, so I, I try to I try to shoot it straight. Um, what I tell everybody is, getting qualified and pre-qualified for a mortgage um, is not easy. Okay, um, there is work involved, um, but it doesn't have to be complicated. So I think you all have taken the first step here by being here. Um, to learn about exactly, you know, what are the steps and what I need to do to prepare myself for it, okay? The analogy that I use all the time is uh, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're a doctor, right, for your finances, okay? When you're going to qualify for a loan, whether it be anything, car loan, home loan, whatever it may be, um, you know, we're doing an x-ray of your finances, right? I don't know if any of you have had hesitancy as well going to the doctor. I know I have, right? There's the, there's the fear of, well, if I don't go, then I then nothing bad's gonna happen, right? Um, but then you end up going and you feel better, right? I, I know where I stand, I know where I'm at, and I can develop a plan similar to what Zuel was talking about, right? Um, so what we're gonna go over here basically is the steps in the process, um, what to expect, um, and how to kind of prepare, okay? Uh, so the, the biggest thing, and I mentioned this earlier about talking to a local lender first and what a realtor will tell you, right? It's one of the first steps they're gonna have. Um, the reason for that is they wanna know how to budget, right? What kind of houses are we looking for? Um, is your budget you know, 
$2,000 a month for a payment, or is it $8,000, right? That's gonna change on what houses we're looking at and what areas, right? Uh, so the pre-qualification stage is, is probably, and I would say the most important part, okay? Um, these are the main criteria. So when you speak with me um, on our first call, these are the areas we're going to cover, okay? Um, goals is something that Suhail mentioned as well. You know, when are you looking to buy, all those kinds of things, where, uh, what the timing is. Um, and then when it comes to qualifying and figuring out what we qualify for, there are, there's four listed up there, but I, I would say there's three main criteria. We're gonna lump credit and debt together. Uh, but income, assets, and credit, okay? Um, any lender um, qualifying anybody for, for a loan or mortgage um, is going to analyze those pieces of information to assess what your purchasing power is, okay? Um, so I'll kind of go over here where, as far as the documentation involved in some of these things. So um, when we have uh, the conversation, you know, when we talk about income, right, obviously we're talking about employment, okay? So we're going to go through kind of your history of employment, um, what you make, right, whether it's, whether you have a salary, whether you're hourly, you could be commissioned, right? Um, everybody's job is different, right? <laughs> There's a million different jobs out there. So um, in this stage, that's where we look to extract the most information from you, right? Having as much information about where you're at, right, in terms of employment um, and what you have for a down payment, assets, right, and where your credit is, is gonna help us determine the best path to get you where you wanna be, okay? Perfect, there's my little guy there who says keep him pre-qualified. All right, so after you know, we have the first conversation, um, what are we looking to do? What's our objective, okay? Um, there are a lot of things involved in a loan, but I can tell you it basically comes down to this right here, okay? Debt to income ratio. So um, what we're looking to do is we kind of start backwards, right? Similar to so having a plan, right? we um, want to determine what your maximum monthly payment can be, okay? And the way we do that is using this ratio. So what the government says, essentially, is that you're allowed to have up to 45% of your income allotted for your housing ratio, okay? Uh, and so let's just use the example. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward and easy here. So you have an $84,000 salary, right? Um, the debts we'll get to in a second. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take that, um, that number that you make, whatever it may be, your gross monthly income, uh, multiply that by 45%, right? That's what the government says you can spend. It gives us $3,150, okay? From there, what we do is subtract out any of your other monthly debt obligations, okay? So these will be things like car payments, student loan payments, minimums on credit cards, things like that. Once we have that figure, in this example here, we're taking, um, we're taking a payment for student loans and your car payment and subtracting that uh, from that 45% of 31,150 to give us a figure of $2,500, okay? Um, that's the goal of, of pre-approval. Once we have that number, we can then work backwards and generate, okay, well, what does that mean in terms of your purchasing power? What type of sales price does that, does that give you? Um, and we're gonna get to that in a few slides later when we go through an actual example um, of a loan. Um, I want this to be interactive, so if any of this is, anybody has any questions, so we have a small group here, fire away, um, but we'll keep, we'll keep moving if not to keep, it, uh, keep things on track. So, next thing we're gonna bring up is, uh, is credit, okay? Uh, so, there's a lot of information and a lot of misnomers about um, about credit, right? So when you go to apply um, with us or any lender, um, we run what's called a full consumer report, okay? Uh, colloquially, that's, you might know that as a hard credit pull, right? Um, couple things to note on that. Um, in terms of you know, running the report, everybody thinks, oh, well, I'm scared to do it because it's gonna hurt my credit, right? Okay, that's the first misconception, okay? It does affect your credit, typically between one to five points, okay? So if we run your credit and you're a 700, you know, it may bring you down to a 698 or something like that, right? Um, the other point of when we run your credit is you have a 30-day window, okay, from the moment you authorize somebody like me 
to run your credit, uh, for you to talk to other lenders to do the same, okay? So within a 30-day window, you could talk to me, five other, 50 other lenders if you wanted to. Um, within that, 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 is your, that is your window to um, have your credit not be impacted. So the credit bureaus, the reason you're able to do that is they view however many pulls, they view that as one singular pull on your credit. So every time somebody goes to run it, it's not going to be a five-point hit, five-point hit, five-point hit, right? Because um, you're seeking the same type of credit. So that's just something to, to remember and keep in your arsenal. Um, you guys have the power as consumers and shoppers to, to do your due diligence and do those things, and, and, and that is um, something you want to keep in mind. Uh, getting into credit scores, um, there are three types of, well, this is, sorry, the, the, the headline's a little misleading there. We're, we're, we're getting into the types of loans that exist, okay? Um, so typically there are three basic loan types overarching, FHA, conventional, and VA, okay? Uh, conventional is, is what most people fall into when you see headlines or hear about, you know, what the rates are. They're looking at a conventional 30-year fixed loan, right? Um, most people fall into that category when they buy. Um, however, you know, we work a lot with, with FHA and, and VA loans as well. So taking VA aside for now, so that is, the, uh, that is a home loan for veterans. Uh, so if anybody's served, um, it's an excellent, excellent loan program. Um, it's up to 0% financing. Um, so you can basically go in with, with no money down and, and you're paying closing costs. Um, it's a really good loan. Uh, FHA is designed for... Um, for people with a little bit more bruised credit. So if you have some history and your score is not maybe where you want it to be, um, the FHA loan exists to give those people who wouldn't otherwise be qualifying conventional an opportunity to get into a home and purchase a home. The credit score requirements are lower um, and they offer very competitive rates, okay? So the biggest question, and this is uh, what, what I even had trouble with years ago before my wife and I purchased. Um, I don't know if you've grown up with parents or had guardians or whomever uh, that you've always heard the classic 20% down, right? That's how I grew up. My mom always said that's all I always heard was 20% down, 20% down, that's what you need. Uh, so that, I think, has a negative impact in people's minds when they're thinking about purchasing a home because they're like, how do I have 20% down? I mean, who among you here has, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars just sitting around? Right? Nobody. That's where we step in. So get a couple of the facts out of the way. Um, your minimum down payment um, on a loan is going to be 3% of the sales price. That is all you're required to have. Um, we kind of went through everything on the, on the, on the loan types there. Uh, so closing costs. Um, you've heard this term as well. Uh, usually it's, it's, it's very generic. You're probably watching a commercial and I'm like, oh, closing costs. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? It's kind of scary, right? Uh, where are all the hidden figures? And we're going to go through those in a second. Um, but typically you can allot in the DC area between three to 4% of the sales price. Okay. Um, those are going to include, um, lender charges, um, title charges. A lot of that's going to be administrative fees, right? Um, setup fees, processing fees, things like that. There's your government charges, right? Um, otherwise known as uh, sales and recordation tax. Best way to look at it is the sales tax, right? Uncle Sam's always going to get a piece of, of any transaction that's out there, right? Uh, that's typically, you know, can be up to 1.45%. Um, and then there's prepaids and escrows. Um, and again, we're going to go over these things. I have a specific example of a loan estimate that I would send, that I send to clients, right, after a pre-approval that we're going to walk through together um, that's going to have, a, a, you know, a bit more information and be a little bit more clear afterwards. Um, what if you don't have the money? This is the most common problem, right? Most people hesitate because I, maybe I don't even have 3%, right? Uh, how, how am I going to do this? Um, so here are a few options, right? Gift funds is, is one example. Um, doesn't work for everybody. Um, some people have, you know, Maybe some, some well-off parents or other family members that are willing to contribute to them. Uh, that's great if you do. Um, that, that, that's easy enough to explain. Uh, down payment assistance programs. Uh, so this is where Maryland Mortgage Program comes in and DC Open Doors. Um, 
We're gonna get into those in a second. Um, and then there's also seller credit. And this is gonna be more, uh, your realtor is gonna you know, be involved in that. Um, there's negotiations that can happen to, to get you some credit that can help on your closing costs and get your, you know, your cash out of pocket down to where you, know, you might need it to be. A uh, couple of highlights of the program. So whether we're talking in Maryland with Maryland Mortgage Program, DC, DC Open Doors is the name of their program. Uh, Virginia has a program as well. All of these programs um, have the same spirit and have the same kind of construction, right? The idea is uh, most common problem, you can't do the down payment, right? Um, you, you're renting at the moment, you know you can do a monthly payment, you have everything else in place, but you can't get that. So the spirit of all these programs is what they say is, okay, well, we're gonna give you the uh, money you need for that minimum down payment, right? 3%, if it is, um, in the form of a zero interest deferred second loan. A lot of words. What that means is uh, you will not make any payments on that loan, that down payment loan, and zero interest will accrue. The only time that you need to, that that, that loan becomes due or payable is when you either go to sell or refinance. So the idea with first-time home buyers is, um, you know, most people are in homes, the first homes can be five to seven years, right? It can vary depending on your needs. Um, so the idea is they're, they're giving you the money for the down payment as you make payments on your home, right? You close, you're making monthly payments. It's going towards your principal. You're building the equity, right? That's why we're, we're here and talking about, about homes is because a, it's a great wealth tool, right? So as you make all those payments, you are accruing the equity, and home values are typically going to increase, right? So the value of your home is going to continue to go up as you're paying it down. Um, so the idea is when you're either ready to move on to sell, that, that money, that, that, that loan that's going to become due, is simply just going to come out of your net proceeds of the home. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. A um, couple of pros and cons to it. Um, obviously, the pros are you get the money, right? <laughs> the money that you need for a down payment uh, lowers the total cost of owning a home. Uh, the cons are, depending on certain programs, closing times can be a little bit longer uh, since we're dealing with a third party um, that, that does their own underwriting. Um, it can take a little bit longer, uh, and you know that can, that can affect the structure of your offer. So that's something that, you know, in consultation as a team, right, with your realtor and your lender, you know, we're going to work together to, to put the best offer together for you that makes the most sense um, for the home that you want to purchase. Um, there's a little bit more paperwork, so obviously you have to meet the qualifications for these programs, which are typically income limits, right, income caps, and I know you're going to go into it a little bit more, um, and a uh, little bit of a higher interest rate on those programs. Um, Obviously, they're giving you the money to get you in a home, so it's not going to be as ideal. Um, perfect. So um, this, is, this is the main meat of my presentation um, that I wanted to go over. So this is an example loan. So I'm going to take a step back and uh, outline the process. So, you know, when you decide on you pick a realtor, and if you look into your folders, there's a, there's a, I have a sheet there for the uh, uh, summary of the entire process. Um, if you'd like to pull it out now. So you'll speak to a realtor first. You've made the decision to buy. Um, as I mentioned before, the first thing they're going to do is tell you to get in touch with me. So there'll be an introduction. Um, and what we'll do first is have uh, what I call a dreams and goals call or a pre-qualification call where we're going to talk about um, all those things previously that I listed, right? The income, assets, and credit. So we'll go over your job history. We'll go over what you're thinking for down payment. We'll go over... Um, kind of your credit and what your monthly debts are. So once we finish that call, um, I typically send or will send a uh, very creatively titled email called Next Steps, okay? That's where I'll outline everything we talked about, loop in your realtor, uh, since we're all on the same team, and so and, and keeps us on the same page. And we'll outline everything that we talked about in that, in that conversation. We'll provide uh, an application link, right, online, and the list of documentation that you'll need to upload. Um, and those typical items are uh, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, are kind of, kind, of, kind of the main three that, that, that we'll take a look at. 
Um, and then once you, once you have that email and you're ready to move forward, um, you'll fill out the application, you'll authorize us to, to run your credit, um, and from there, you know, we, all we need is about a day to kind of review everything. If we have all your documentation, we'll review it. We're going to look at all the different types of loan programs that are out there, right? So if it's depending on your credit score, if it's lower, right? We'll look at FHA options. If you're in a higher tier of, of, of credit, we'll look at all the conventional loan programs. And there are a million different types of programs that exist. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very personal thing. No loan is the same, right? And you all don't have the same jobs. Everything's a little bit different. Um, so once we have all the information and we've, we've, we've analyzed it, looked at it, um, we're gonna, we'll explore all the best options for you. And following that, this is what we'll send. Hopefully we send you a pre-approval letter, okay? Uh, which will outline you know, your maximum kind of purchasing power uh, that your realtor will use uh, when making an offer. And the other big thing that you're gonna get from me uh, is a spreadsheet uh, that shows an example of the loan that, that we're offering, okay, or that, that the options that you have. So um, I'm just gonna kind of go through these kind of line item by line item, um, and that's what we would do, right? Once, once you're, you're pre-approved, we'd set up another call and we'd walk through all this together so that you have as much information and feel confident, right, um, about what you're buying and where that money's going, right? I talked earlier about you hear closing costs. Well, here's, here's where they are and here's what it means and we'll walk through all that together and make sure that makes sense. Um, so we start with um, your sales price. Um, in this example here, um, this, is a, this would be for a, a, a DC loan. I know, I know we're in Maryland, but it, it all is relatively the same. Um, so we start with the sales price. For this would be, let's say, $350,000, okay? Um, that top number, 95%, that's what's called your loan to value. The best way to think about that is, is the inverse of what you're putting down. So if you're putting 5% down, your loan to value is 95%. 10% down, 90%, so on and so forth, okay? Down payment, uh, so in this example, we're putting 5% down, right? So 17,500 would be your down payment. Um, the first section is going to be uh, lender fees. Um, so again, as I mentioned, a lot of these are administrative, um, but you see in the, in the first line there, uh, appraisal, credit, and flood. Flood is typically not applicable um, depending on your areas. Obviously, there's certain areas by the bay and by the water that require flood insurance. Uh, I, most of the time, you're not gonna, that's not going to be an issue. Um, appraisals for us typically run about 575 is the cost of an appraisal. Um, and we can, I can touch on that for a second. I didn't have a slide built, um, and I don't want to take up too much time. But um, is everybody familiar with what an appraisal is? Do you have any questions? I'm putting some blank stairs. All right, let's go through it real quick. So um, we have uh, an independent third party um, will uh, appraise your home, right, to determine the value. Lenders require this because, obviously, the loan amount we're handing over couple hundred thousand dollars to you, right? So we need to ensure that that home is, is as is, right? That, that it's reflected in the value or else we're losing money, right? Um, so independent third-party appraisers um, will go out to the home. Uh, they have their own sets of criteria. They look at everything. They look at comps in the area, right? Other homes that have sold that are comparable uh, to the home that you're looking for. Um, and they'll make a determination of the value of that property. Um, Appraisals, the way I look at them is whatever you may be offering, let's say it's 350 for this one. If it comes in at 350 and $1, money, right? <laughs> Anything above is, is considered kind of instant equity, right? So all the better if it comes back at 360, right? Um, there are, uh, now if it comes in under, right? Sounds a little scary. There are ways within the loan structure that, that we address that and it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, obviously, if it comes in, super low and it's $50,000 lower, we may have an issue, uh, but, but there are ways to work around that. Um, and then the credit fee for running your credit is typically, you know, like $95, something small, okay? That covers that. Uh, processing fee, um, most lenders, right, this is, this is a standard fee. Um, we're, we're right in line with market, so obviously there's, there's more than just first home that are local lenders out there. Um, everybody's fees for administrative are, are gonna be around the same. Um, the uh, borrower paid PMI via cash, okay? 
Uh, so this, is, anybody ever heard the term mortgage insurance before? Okay, so mortgage insurance exists. So if you're putting less than 20% down um, in a mortgage, you're required to have uh, what's called mortgage insurance, okay? Um, that exists to protect the lender um, in case of default, okay? So we remember the, the old moniker, 20% down, 20% down. So you're not required to have that, but obviously the less money you put down, the riskier the loan is, right? Um, everything that happens in terms of you know, your interest rate and pricing and all that is all risk-based, right? We're, we're analyzing your profile as, uh, as a creditor, right? Um, how, how reliable are you at, at, at your ability to repay debt? Um, and so all that is scaled towards um, uh, your ability to repay. So you have the option uh, for mortgage insurance to have it as a monthly part of your payment um, or uh, as a single premium buyout um, at the, at the uh, transaction of your loan when you're at the closing table. Um, again, some of these things we're gonna, we would do better off talking in person, right, uh, once, once we're together. Yeah, you have a question? Is there? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not required to have mortgage insurance. That's correct. Where you're required to have mortgage insurance. So it's any anything under twenty percent. Right. Um, and so the, the pricing is, is 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 tiered differently. Right. If you're putting closer to fifteen percent down. Um, your payment may be a little bit less. When you're, when you're putting 3% down to the minimum, it's gonna be a little bit higher, okay? And there are some strategies in that. Sometimes you can put a little bit less than 20% and get a better interest rate. And then once you, you have the mortgage, you can pay off and then get the PMI off. That's exactly right. And then you, you get a lower interest rate. That's exactly right, so yeah. There's different ways to do it, like kind of gaming the system. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Work with your mortgage person to like figure out the best approach to that. Absolutely. Eighteen percent is like sounds like the money spot where you can get a less interest rate and then you're still two percent down uh, extra uh, after you make your uh, uh, your purchase and then you get your low interest rate and get the PMI off. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's getting a little bit into the weeds a little bit and and, and that's fine. Um, and again, that's something that on a one-on-one -on -one consultation, that's how we're gonna go through and, and, and go through all those options, exactly. Um, but just to, to clarify again, under 20%, you'll have it. Uh, now, that's not on the life of the loan. Once you've reached the equity point of, of, of 20%, that PMI will fall off and you'll no longer have that payment. Okay, this is kind of the, and again, we're just speaking broad specifics here, or broad generalities, we will get more specific um, with hopefully each of you at some point in the near future. Um, but just to keep things moving along, um, the next area is gonna be, um, estimated title charges. Um, so everybody familiar with title, title and escrow companies, okay? Um, they essentially represent the transaction, right? They're, the way to look at them is they're the legal side of, of you buying the home. Um, they're ensuring that, that the deed is clean, um, that, that everything's in order, that, that the government and everybody else knows this is your property essentially, right? So there are fees that go along um, with that. Um, they're listed there. Uh, estimated taxes and fees, uh, so these are when we were talking about uh, the, the government uh, recording fees and sales tax essentially, right? Um, that's, that's what you're paying there. Estimated upfront escrows and prepaids, okay? So um, these are, is everybody familiar with the term escrow? Heard of it before? Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. Um, the part of your payment, uh, and we're kind of jumping down here, so um, you'll see in the monthly payment breakdown, you have um, obviously your principal and interest payments, uh, mortgage insurance if you have it, and homeowner's insurance 
which you're required to have, and uh, property tax, right, your taxes. So what, what escrow means is you're going to make this payment. Whatever that number is, you're making that payment, that's fine. Um, what they're going to do, though, is they're taking a portion of the payment that you make each month and putting it into what's essentially looking at as a forced savings account, okay? Um, so, you, so that they're going to make the payments, um, which are typically, so for, for property taxes, um, it's typically every six months in Maryland and D.C. Um, so it's not a monthly payment, it's, it's every six months. Homeowner's insurance is usually done in a single year as a single premium, okay? Um, so that you don't have to worry about missing those, that's what escrow is there for. So part of your payment is gonna be put in there so you don't have to worry about it when the time comes, right? It's allotted, there'll be an adjustment if, obviously as years go on, typically taxes go up, so there's, there's the likelihood that your, your property tax will go up slightly um, each year, each couple years. Um, but that's essentially what, what an escrow account is. It's a forced savings account, okay? Um, so you're paying some of that, some of that upfront um, in, as you can see, homeowner's insurance, property taxes, and the, the, the amount of months, um, and your prepaid interest, okay? Um, so prepaid interest is, let's say you close on a home um, today, what's today, the 20, 20, 22nd, right? Um, mortgage payments, work in rears as opposed to if you're renting at the moment, okay? So as an example, if you're renting um, August rent, you pay August rent on the first of the month, right? And that covers August for you, okay? Mortgages are paid, again, in rears in the back. So if you close today, your first payment, mortgage payment would be on September 1st. And that payment is covering the August mortgage, okay? So the prepaid part of that interest is accounting for that time, because if you close on the 22nd, obviously your September payment's gonna cover your interest in August, but the moment you sign, the moment <laughs> you start paying interest, and you start paying your bills, right? So that prepaid interest portion is just gonna be, depending on what day of the month you close, it's gonna cover your interest from that day to the end of that month, okay? Um, other third-party fees, these, these can vary depending on property type, right? Whether we're looking at a condo or a single-family home, um, Condos have what are called condo questionnaire fees. Um, all condos are required to be approved by, by Fannie and Freddie Mac. Um, and so we send out questionnaires to look at the health of, of the condo as a whole, right? So they're gonna answer questions about their budget, um, if they have any deferred maintenance issues, right? We're gonna address that there um, in the questionnaire. So you have that fee. Uh, realtor administration fee, you know, similar to title and our processing fee, right? There's, a, there's typically a small fee there um, to, to, to run the administrative side of it. Um, and then there's the final section is deposits and credits, right? Um, again, these can get a little bit, uh, a little bit wonkier and, and, and more personal. Um, in DC, there's the first time home buyer tax credit, um, which, which if you're under a certain sales price, uh, cuts that um, recordation tax in half, essentially. Um, so DC is very, very robust when it comes to the, when it comes to that. Um, and now getting into the big numbers. So total cash needed for closing, right? This is the breakdown of all these things from lender fees down combined, right? So that is the total amount of funds, right, that you'll need to close on that home at five percent down. The interest rates set up there. Um, 6.75, obviously there's been a lot of talk of interest rates, right? We were everybody's favorite person two years ago, obviously not so much now. Um, I don't set those, obviously, you know, the market is what it is. Um, and, you know, when we have personal consultations, I can get into a little bit more with you on why things are where they are and where we may see them going. But uh, just using 6.75 now as an example. Um, and then the monthly pump, uh, breakdown, right? So um, the principal and interest payment, that's part of your monthly. Uh, the PMI, your homeowner's insurance, uh, property taxes, and any condo fees, right? Bring us to that total payment. So essentially, we're we, getting back to the pre-approval part of it, right? Um, you know, once we have everything, we're going to have a couple of these options for you where we'll walk through a loan, and if it's uh, an assistance loan or maybe you have the money for funds, right, we'll walk through all these together. Um, and again, you know, when we are looking at your debt to income ratio and trying to find your maximum monthly payment, we're, we're, that's what we're basing it off of. So as long as this number here is below what we've determined, right, as your maximum purchasing power, then we're good to go. 
Um, that is the nuts and bolts. I know that's a lot of information. Um, again, hopefully we'll, we'll speak uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis soon enough um, and happy to talk about you know, your situation, but those are kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, as far as you know, once you're under contract and ratified and the steps involved in that, um, that's kind of like the second wing portion. I don't like to really talk about those at these. Um, that's gonna be in your summary as well. Um, and that is pretty much my presentation. The only thing I'll there's some other information in your packets there um, about how, kind of how to prepare, um, what to look for, what drives interest rates, a couple of good stuff. And you should have also, um, while you may not be purchasing a home today, I know we were talking about down payment and things like that, uh, you should see a scratch off ticket in your lot of ticket in your folder as well. So at, at the end of the day, hopefully somebody might walk away with a little bit of money to help with the down payment. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me and being here, and I'm here if you have any questions, okay?